what what would you say is the most single one important thing going on right now from a markets and DC perspective? Listen, it's very difficult not to say trade since that is like the fundamental economic issue and we can think of many ways where it could get worse. It's, it's also very hard for me not to say it's impeachment. Look, uh, I know the, uh, the I know sort of the consensus is great. If the Democrats uh, actually hold an impeachment vote and they impeach him, it dies in the Senate. And we're sort of what was this all about? But listen, the, the, the spread between four more years of Donald Trump and four years of Elizabeth Warren is pretty wide. I think as we've seen with the Wall Street very worried about this. If this if this impeachment affair, whether or not they the Senate would vote to ever expel the president, makes it more likely that the next president is someone who wants a wealth tax, uh, Medicare for all, massive new spending, uh, break up all the big tech companies. Mm -hmm. I think that's pretty significant. I love how you just threw Warren in there as the candidate. By the way, I saw what you did there, Stephen. Uh, well, Stephen Myro. Okay, is the market, and I, I don't want to make it political, but it certainly is something that sort of rolls into the market. Is the stock market undervaluing the possibility that 20 or more U.S. senators, Republicans, turn against the – everyone just assumes that he, if the House does it, he's going to slide through the Senate no problem. We heard from Mitt Romney the other day. It's possible, not probable, but possible that 20 senators flip. If that happens, what then? Well, we're in a whole new world then, Brian, but – I'm with the consensus on this one. I, I think uh, what Jimmy pointed out, that the base case, which we have at Beacon, is that the House impeaches, the Senate acquit. What this is really about is not a constitutional issue. It's more of a political issue and how it plays into the election narrative of next year. So what the Democrats are trying to do is, you know, Nancy Pelosi decided at some point over this weekend that the political stink is off impeachment and with enough of the so-called majority makers, the, the freshman Democrats that come from districts that Trump won being in favor of it, that it was time to move forward with this. And they believe that this is going to help them, I think, uh, you know, build their case of this narrative of a, uh, a corruption around the Trump administration and help them going into next year. So from the perspective of the senators, I think what they're really looking to do is not win 20, but if they can get three or four that they could, which I think is very likely that they could peel off in the Republicans in the Senate, they can at least take the moral victory that they got a majority of the Senate voting in favor of impeachment. I mean, Jimmy, there is, I didn't say it was a chance, but there is a, we don't know what these individuals are going to do. We know that Trump maybe has not made a lot of friends even inside the Republican Party. Isn't it possible that some of these senators kind of get together in the hallways and they're like, I don't like them, do you like them? Well, maybe, maybe you know, and, and you don't know what's going to happen. Our job is to plan for the improbable because that's what the market needs to focus on. Exactly. Listen, uh, I don't know if that I don't know if it'd be a black swan if that happens. But you already had seven Republicans refu refusing to, uh, you know, uh, um, say that listen, the president's fine. This is this is a witch hunt. This is a hoax. So we're, we're already up to we're already up to seven. And again, we don't know what's going. So I don't see how you could possibly say, knowing that we really have not heard. Uh, as much from the whistleblower, who the, the whistleblower, who the people that he, the White House officials that he spoke with, uh, we don't know what else, uh, what other conversations are in the vault uh, that they've been putting there for national security reasons. A lot more could come out, and I think you have to uh, assign some probability more than insignificant uh, that they're able to get enough senators to expel the president. Still highly unlikely, but I don't think it's zero. Yeah, it's not zero, exactly. And, Stephen, listen, uh, does this make the odds of a trade deal more likely? Because if the president is going to run on the economy, he's got this impeachment inquiry overhang, whatever ends up happening, he wants the economy and maybe the stock market, I'm assuming, to look as good as possible and, and starting fairly soon, I would imagine. Brian, I think this is what the market's getting you know, significantly wrong. The market consensus is pricing in the likelihood of a deal for exactly what you refer to, which we call the Trump put, which is that Trump wants to get reelected and it's better for the economy for a deal. So the market's looking at impeachment as putting extra pressure on Trump. However, if anything, if the impeachment affects trade, we at Beacon actually believe it makes uh, an interim trade deal even less likely because it gives she 
in China the view that he can put more pressure on Trump. Meanwhile, Trump doesn't see the trade war as, as failing. He looks at one proxy for the economy, and that's the Dow Jones. And as you pointed out, it's melting up. So he feels no pressure to get a deal. He thinks mm -hmm. that she's under more pressure than he is.